Uh, eight hour mark. Damn, this is a long ass vlog. Oh, this is the Inzim set, I think. This is from Hector. Mm -mm. This is a. Uh, I think you just held down by accident, actually. You might have just held down by accident, trying to like fast fall off a of moon jump and pressing M. Yeah, you can't do that with self. It's unfortunate. That was a free hit. You actually played that opening gambit really well, too. That makes it even more unfortunate. Attack. Okay, okay, okay. Don't do things like this. So, so. Right. Uh, yeah, I think about game state here. So you tech DR, which is great, right? He has no assist here. Uh -uh. Right, and so like Cell, Cell, his, his main problem has always been neutral, right? Uh, because he has he doesn't have strong long range tools to rely on in the neutral, and so like especially when assists are involved, it's hard to like traverse the screen. Uh, against people that have really really strong assists, but in this situation, right? He has nothing and so when you tech this DR, right? Doing something like like air dash back and this what is this JS like don't 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 do that. Just tech the DR and then just take space from him. Just move forward, right? You have assist available as well, right? You actually do have assist available and so like you don't have to commit like this like literally if you called Janemba and just walked forward on him it would create a much better scenario than you betting it on this this is fucking whack don't do this <laughs> there, there's so many better things you can do because you give him you give him an avenue for a hit that you wouldn't have gotten like, like he would not have gotten that hit otherwise if you did not press uh that particular thing at post dr you turned an advantage situation into a disadvantage one that's mix but you drop the combo, which is really bad. And then he holds up. All right, cool. That's what's up. I don't know how good Janemba is at... Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. No, this is fine. This is fine. Fantastic. Inzim, if you end up watching this video, you're stupid for not just running your 50-50. <laughs> Why did you kick here? Just jump cancel, call assist, and yeah, you, you just 50-50 him there. I don't know. Uh, you, you, gave it, you gave Hector chances. You're not trying to give him chances. Nice 2H. That was good. Mm -mm -mm. Kill him! That was almost super awkward. Dave jump. Okay. Fuzzy, but he blocked, which is good. Okay, it's an interesting spark, but it works out. Uh, I think you could have confirmed this, though. Like, you spark here. You get the hit with Janemba. You can react with Empty Vanish and confirm here. A little bit of a missed opportunity. Nice check with perfect attack. That was a great assist call. Contingency plans. We love those. Not close enough to the corner, though. Punish. Oh my god. 5 L. It's cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't tag? Oh no. Did he air block? I think he did. Ah, yeah. Yeah, up, up, tip, uh, up, teching kind of fucked you there. You can wait it out. Great. 
You don't actually have to do anything here. Like, yes, he puts on... He puts on barrier, right? But there's no chip damage in this game. So if he puts on barrier and decides to start shooting, then you're fine with that because he's just wasting his own barrier time. Because we wouldn't want to shoot into Broly anyway because he wins the Key Blast game. And so nothing really changes if he decides to barrier and shoot you. It does change, right? If he decides to barrier and then walk forward, then that's different because obviously you can't cut him off by shooting. But if he decides to put on barrier and then just sit there shooting you, then that's fine. You don't have to do anything. You just wait. Just wait out the timer. If he wants to commit to re-barriering every single time, that puts himself into recovery. So eventually, he's just not going to be able to do that. He only has one assist available as well, so he can't cover his tracks as effectively. Can you get 21 level 3? Nice, nice. Gotta get him out here. Oh. I don't know what Jidemba can do there. That sucks. He hit his backdash, which means that this could have been a little faster. Because you should be able to hit him before he backdashes. JH. Because, like, I don't think J2H would have reached either. Pretty much only Vanish, I think, would have worked there. Hard to get. Good. This is like exactly if you're a Janemba player, this is like exactly the situation you're looking for. Is for them to just blind call assist. You two to us. And like if he would have stayed on the ground, it would have been fine for him. But since he air blocked, it's really not fine for him. Nice, that was good air to air. So, I will say that, uh, I, actually, I'll, I'll go over this at the end, because I, I do have something to say to Hector in particular. We'll keep going with the VOD for now. Okay, so, this sucks, but I don't feel sorry for you, because you had time here. So, like, you jump and slash, which is fine. You had time to vanish there. It, it does count as a hit, so you can vanish the safety. That was like charged M grab too. I don't even think that was. Like slight charge M grab. <laughs> like the only way you die here too, which is unfortunate. Yep, trying to play the key blast game with Broly. Mm hmm. That'll happen. Yep. Okay. Get the grab. Okay. Now, here's where I ask you, do you want to win? If you want to win here, just super here. <laughs> or just like do beam super. You, you, like he just dies. Like you don't have to. Tournament combos, bro. You have five bars. Like. Shame. He's a psychopath for that. Broly things. You threw that though. That was an easy win. No assist. Okay, we tried to get some initiative there, but that super dash was uh to the moon. Okay. 
Okay. Against so so Cell is actually quite good against Team Gohan. Uh, at least whenever Cell's playing defense, because regardless of whether he does EX or M leg, you have perfect attack to check. Right. So anytime, anytime he does legs, he has to worry about you pressing perfect attack for half a bar. Right. He has to worry about. It. Now he can he can try to go for baits. I think I think he could do like backdash bomb or something like that if he wanted to bait it. Yeah, but like it difficult. He, he cannot do leg solo like on cell like at all, um, unless he like hard calls something out, and that's hard to do. And per ex perfect attack is also not the easiest thing in the world to punish either. And so like make sure you you recognize that. Like I have a tool to check him, so at least use it once or twice to make him think about it, right? Because you never established the threat, he just kept running it over and over again. You also have GC available here too. You choose to take all of this and spark when you could have guard canceled to safety. A little bit lost in the sauce. He tried to roll and crush him. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Did you uptech? I think you did. Ah, should have watched my parking scramble video. No one expects that shit, because people forget that that's even a thing now. Damn, that was just a really, that was a really fucking good assist call on his part. It like, it like barely grazes you too, you get full comboed. That was good shit. Okay. Challenge, interesting, okay. Okay, your mini was wet. <laughs> so, so the reason that I don't like this is because um, the past few times, the past few times that you put in them on defense uh, with Broly, he's done some type of armor move. Most of the time, it's been Lariat. And so, like, if I were you in this situation, I'll be thinking about, okay, how do I stop myself from getting Lariated? Uh, and this is not the way. This is not the way. <laughs> uh, probably backdash on wake up, I'm guessing. Yeah, probably. You did L grab on wake up. I don't even need to say anything about that. You're just, you're just stupid. Okay. Uh, defensive programming. So here, uh, um, 
you get locked down, you get behind the assist, which is really good. Okay. Okay, but right here is where what you do on offense changes. I'm really about to ban the word grip because you're so fucking annoying, Cater. Holy shit. Okay, here is where your offense changes, right? Shut the fuck up, kid. Uh, so here, right, you see that you stagger 5LL and he jumps, right? So that, that telegraphs, um, <clears throat> that telegraphs that he's choosing fuzzy jump, right? He's obviously choosing fuzzy jump as his primary defensive option whenever you put him on defense. He obviously does not want to be grabbed. You don't also don't have to worry about like vanish or anything like that because he doesn't have any meter. And so, um, leaving a giant gap like this isn't great, right? You go for, you go for, uh, M, M shoulder. Like, this is a really large gap. It's also not tall enough to make contact with, with jump height. <clears throat> if I were you, I would just keep your tight, you, you keep your staggers tight in this situation, especially when they've revealed like, okay, I'm trying to fuzzy jump out. Cause you'll hit their jump start up more often than not. Um, and leaving gaps like this is not like, this just isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. If he had a move that hit jump height, like hit like up here, then that would be something, but it, this just doesn't. So <laughs> probably should have been able to recognize that and choose uh, a different, a different uh, pressure structure on, on offense there. The out uh, JM just didn't make contact. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I did for it into 2S. Happens. Mm -hmm. That's a, actually a punish. I don't know if you meant to punish him or if you were going to do that anyway, but that was cool. Don't have to level three there. In fact, it's really important that you don't level three here. <laughs> it's really important that you don't level three here because, like, it, if you if you had this extra bar going into the next character, then like it completely changes like what you what you have to make comebacks. Uh, this is hit confirmable though. We talked about this. I think we talked about this uh, shortly after this happened. Um, but EX rolling crush is hit confirmable because the camera angle changes. So. Um, you don't have to like YOLO level three whenever you do it. Like if it's blocked or something like that, like, you, and it's also safe on block too. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's minus five. So like, yeah, you, you don't have to like level three right away. You have time. Damn. Wow, that was a really good air to air, but I don't know why. Hmm. Smoke you with EX legs in neutral. And then he dramatic finishes you. Okay, okay. So, a few things. First of all, uh, um. Uh, and I've, ta I've talked to you about this many times. You can't block everything. I respect your attempt to block a lot of things. And a lot of the time, blocking puts you in a better situation as a result. But when you're blocking there needs to be a there needs to be an end goal right you can't block don't commit to blocking for long periods of time if you don't have an end goal in mind and that end goal can be different right like some people block until they can jump out of something some people block until they challenge some people block to look for a chance to use a defensive mechanic like a reflect or a guard cancel or a raw tag right regardless of what your goal is and i'm not going to tell you what your goal should be because that that lies on the player and your philosophy on the game uh but a lot of the time when you're blocking things uh when you're blocking things for long periods of time you're kind of blocking mindlessly right you're blocking without trying to make the situation better for you in some way and i know this because you're getting you're getting pressure reset a lot 
right? And at no point do you attempt to make the situation better for yourself until your opponent is just running pressure and their assist is resetting and then they're running more pressure and so on and so forth. <clears throat> And this is why it's a this is why it's so important to be aware of all of the defensive options that you have at your disposal. So we talked about when Team Gohan does legs, you can check him with perfect attack, regardless of whether it's EX or or M legs, as long as you don't miss input, of course. Um, you can always check him with perfect attack if he does that shit solo. If he does it with an assist, of course, it, it, it is safe in that regard. But for him to answer EX perfect attack post legs, he has to do a very specific call out. If there even is any, I'm not sure if there is. Because like even uh, perfect attack might even hit like his backdash. Like if he does legs backdash or something like that, it might just hit him uh, straight up. So I'm not I'm not 100 percent on on the uh, you know that that particular scenario. But at least do it to show him that yes i know that this this is something that i have in my arsenal and that completely changes the way that the offender has to run offense because the first time he gets checked with perfect attack now every time that he does leg solo he's going to be thinking about is he going to perfect attack here or not right and it's not like he can react to the perfect attack and do it he has to make the hard call out so it, it, you you present him a crossroads either he gives up his pressure altogether looking for perfect attack right or he risks getting perfect attack and potentially fucking dying for it. And even if he decides to give up, right? Let's say he decides, you know, I don't want to risk getting perfect attack, so I give up my pressure. That's really good for you. Now you're in a situation where you you would have had to defend before, but you don't now, right? You, you, by him giving up his pressure, you you alleviate all of that. Now you have much more room to wiggle. You can tag. You can do a lot of things. You can move. Mm -mm. But until you present that threat to him, he is not going to respect it. Because he knows, like, that that's just kind of how fighting games work. You're not supposed to respect things that your opponent has not shown you. Uh, unless, you know, there, there, there are different things. At least the first time that you play someone, um, or or if you haven't played them in, in a certain environment before, this is this is how you should go about things. Uh, of course, situations change where, like, if you play someone over and over and over again, like, if they're your training partner, then obviously, like, if you start a new game, you might respect things that you know that they usually do, but that's based on habits, right? But what I'm trying to say is that there's a data set that, that gets built up. Uh, and you do, it, until until that that good amount of time between you and him has been established where you both know each other's options and are specifically creating counters to each other's counters, just click it. Just click the perfect attack and check them, right? Just to see. Did, are they still pressing into it? Do they know what to do against this? Do they know that I even have this option in the first place? A lot of people just forget that characters have certain options to deal with these specific scenarios. And so I want you to keep that in mind when you choose to, to, to block forever. Um, I am not discouraging you from blocking. I, I want to make that clear. I am really not. <clears throat> You're one of the few people that actually blocks enough, but you've actually gone far further than that. You block a little too much, just a little bit, just a little bit. A little bit too much respect is what I would say. Um, blocking is fine, and I will not discourage it in any way. However, I need you to press perfect attack on his solo legs, right? That, that is what I mean. That is a situation where you should not be blocking. You should be checking him, right? Uh, and, and, and if you don't do these things, then opportunity after opportunity after opportunity just passes by right and if you're playing against someone that's really good you cannot give them this many opportunities to hit you because if you give me infinite opportunities to hit you i'm gonna hit you right straight up we, we've gone over this when me and you have played in the clouds before i've told you that you need to do something because if you don't i will keep running my offense and i will get the hit eventually i promise you i promise you because i know how to play the game <laughs> I know how to play the game, so I will hit you eventually. So don't give me chance after chance after chance, right? There are a lot of times where people overextend on their offense as well, and, and it is on you to take, you know, know the game, make your your, your educated guesses, and you know, challenge where is it, where it is in best interest to you, right? Take challenges that are that are on your percentage. You have the highest percentage to get the hit here or escape the situation. Those are where you should be capitalizing. Otherwise, it's okay to block it out as long as it's not, you know, if, if, if your opponent's going to put you in a 50-50 situation and you have a resource to avoid the 50-50, then I would say do that instead of block, right? I.e. guard canceling legs. If you don't feel comfortable pressing perfect attack after legs, you can sure as hell guard cancel legs. I'm sure you can, you're capable of that. There's also guard cancel vanish, right? There's also reflect. There's a lot of things that you can do. And so, um, don't, don't, don't ever find yourself 
doing nothing ever, right? There's the metaphorical doing nothing that I talk about where, um, two people, like you're just like, I tell people, you know, doing nothing is strong, right? But they're not the same nothing. <clears throat> when the doing nothing that I'm talking about is like, if there's nothing going on in neutral and your character has good key blast game, why not just press the key blast and just sit there, right? And wait for them to respond. <clears throat> Especially if you have advantage. That's a certain type of nothing. Nothing is also something though. <laughs> <laughs> the choosing no uh, choosing to do nothing is an option right <clears throat> and so you are choosing to do nothing but it has no goal right having no goal is the problem no matter what you choose in this game there has to be a reason for it <clears throat> if you're just choosing to block it out and you have no constructed scenario in your mind about what's going to happen after then you shouldn't choose that option no matter what that option is, right? You should never find yourself mindlessly doing something. Blocking is included in that, right? Okay, cool. Work on it. Work on it, work on it, work on it. Also, pay attention to your opponent's uh, defensive habits. So this is harder. This, this is actually this is actually much harder. Um, because if, if someone is good at, at switching up off uh, uh, options on defense, it's very hard to deal with because that's Dragon Ball Fighters. That's just how it is. However, a lot of people have telegraphs. Right? A lot of people have telegraphs of how they play defense. And so, like, Inzem's telegraph is, like, once he gets fuzzy jumping in his head, he usually keeps fuzzy jumping until it works or gets him hit. Right? And then he'll choose something else. And if you were able to, to realize that, that's, a, that's at least one free hit. Right? And one free hit can be a really big deal for the overall happening of a set because that leads to a knockdown. Maybe a character gets killed for it. Right? That actually means quite a lot. So, pay attention to what your opponent is choosing on defense and then attack that thing, right? And then it will put the emphasis on them as the defender to adjust their defense, which is what we want as the offender. We At no point as the offender do we want our opponent to just be able to autopilot and choose the same thing over and over again and just get out of our pressure for free, right? You want them actively thinking about what they need to do on defense because that's what mental stack is, right? That's what mental stack is meant to do. Make them think about all the options that they have and force them into this sense of urgency where they might think, oh, I have to do something right now. And the moment that they think they have to do something, they get counter hit and they fucking die, right? So think about that whenever you're running your offense as well. Your transitions could be could be a little bit better uh, with this team. Also, I think in the mid range, you're a little bit too, you're a little bit too prone to, to um, for going like super jump air to air, which is like, good, don't get me wrong. Going for, going for air to airs, especially when you're positioned beneath your opponent, is good that is very good however i think sometimes you go to it a little bit too much and there are characters that uh are really good against people doing things like that so for example if you try to go under team gohan like if team gohan is here and you're cell and you try to dash forward and go for an air to air if he presses ex legs you die right like you actually die and so against characters like that you want to kind of reel that back a little bit instead what you want to focus on especially because Inzem is not going for Key Blast on Team Gohan that often, is anti-airing. Instead, staying grounded, right? And and responding. Because he was doing, like, dash forward, super jump legs a lot in neutral, right? And if you stay grounded, you can literally react and anti-air him, especially with Cell. You can perfect attack that shit. You can 2-H it with other characters as well. If you have Key Blast, you can literally wait for it to whiff and just shoot him out of it. Uh, if you're playing a character that, that has Key Blast, you know, base Goku... Um, uh, Janemba can punish that shit too. Like if he goes for YOLO EX legs and he misses, you can press 5S, right? Or, or whatever, whatever his key blast, uh, JS or 5S, either or, right? And you can get a hit that way. So like, don't, don't be afraid. Uh, don't, don't, don't autopilot whenever you're, when you're in the neutral like that, because like some characters will command respect in situations that others don't. And, uh, the moment you choose to disrespect a character that has that specific option is when you will die. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot to work on, a lot to work on. But you didn't, you didn't play badly this set. Also, do tournament combos, please. Or not, not tournament combos, but like, if he's gonna kill from you doing fucking beam super, just do the beam super, bro. Like, <laughs> just fucking kill him, bro. <laughs> you tried to go for a re jump when he was literally dead from ABC. Come on, bro. Okay, this is the eight thirty-one. Okay. Mm -mm. This is from Odatch. Oh, this. I see. I see. Mm. 
Mm-mm. in the back. Okay, he's no assist. So funnily enough, so you'll, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people say different things about this interaction. Um, and it's because like, Jiren, Jiren is, is, uh, kind of, kind of an awkward character to like press on. Like it's, it's like, Kind of awkward to press on Jiren, but sometimes you you actually have to. And and and, and like Jiren and Broly, I think Jiren and Z Broly are the two characters that like uh, get a lot from their opponent fearing uh, from 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 fear, just straight up. Uh, people don't want to press on Jiren 2L 5L, uh, and people don't want to press on like Broly 5LL, even though they are minus, right? They are minus in those situations. They are not plus, but people are so afraid that they will let them reset pressure over and over again. And so I think it's important every once in a while, push the 1v1 back to 530 so you can play. Pay me. What the fuck are you talking about? Anyway, um, <laughs> um, it's important to establish that I'm not afraid. I I'm not afraid to the point where I will let you get away with everything and, and challenging these characters uh, in in the in the situations where it is still favorable to you, so like that press, I'm not. I, I there are a lot of places, there are a lot of places that I hate people pressing. Right, there's a lot of places that I hate people pressing. This is not one that I hate so much, especially because it's unassisted. Right, it's early on in the game. Uh, you want to establish like I'm not gonna let you run over me. Right, I'm not gonna let you do whatever you want. And a lot of these Jirens and Brolies do get away with nonsense. Similarly, like, this is not a bad press from him either, right? For the same exact reasons. You knock him down, you have no assist, you go for uh, a special move pressure reset. And he's, he's ready to press because he knows that there's going to be a gap here if you leave one. And so you want to stick to tight staggers, right? You want to stick to tight staggers here. <clears throat> and you have the tools to do so because Gogeta has zero on block too well. And so, like... A lot of the time what will happen is that if he's already programmed like i'm gonna press here because he doesn't have an assist and you do a tight stagger you can often just get a free character here because they're wiggling the exception to that is if he commits to doing like counter or something but obviously doing counter in a block string is way harder than just pressing too well right like that's that's it's way harder right he has to do a motion he has to think about okay i'm gonna commit to the counter if it whiffs he gets straight up punished this is like a lot of things right it loses the command grab as well uh which of course like he's thinking about so um i, I would say uh, err on the side of caution early on in matches try to keep your staggers tight because keeping your staggers tight is where you learn about how your opponent likes to play defense and you will find that some people don't like playing defense at all and so they will eat a 5ll starter and just lose a character It'd be like that. Mm -mm. Okay. That was good on his part, but this is kind of awkward though. So you should wait and see. You, you should wait and see on situations like this. Like, you don't have to commit on defense. Like, yes, he spends this, but, like, bro, you can definitely block this. Like, <laughs> you can definitely block this. Um, and especially, like, he does it, right? And then he immediately super jumps. And so, like, you have so much time. <laughs> you have so much time. Uh, you, you have so much time to, like, think about what to do. But you had already, in your mind, pre-programmed to hold... Uh, the whole tag here like you can see the x on piccolo uh you can see the x on piccolo up here and like yeah so sometimes you want to wait a little bit longer to choose that option because like that that would be a situation where you might even get a free 2h because like that shit was not meaty at all Just 
still alive though, so this is fine. Okay. Oh, drops. Okay, both of you went for grab. That's cool. Yeah, no, that's fine. It was just good on his part. Sometimes that, yep. Sometimes your opponent just chooses the right option. Okay, block Shingles in. Run it back. You went mid. Ah, and then you overextended. So this is a, this is a perfect example of what I mean uh, on an overextension. So you block Shing Hellzone him once, he blocks. You go for it again, which is absolutely fine, right? And then you mess up and you go mid. And instead of conceding the turn, right? Instead of con conceding that my offense is over, right? <clears throat> and, and giving Bagathot his turn, you try to steal a turn. And because you try to steal a turn, he punishes you with Super Dash. He only punished you there because you decided to try to ID reset after your pressure was already done. And that is what I mean by sometimes you just have to concede that you fucked up and it's not your turn anymore. And failure to do that opens up opportunities for your opponent that weren't there before. He does not punish you there unless you reset, uh, unless you overextend and try to go for an IAD there. That's the only reason he hit you. If you would have five, noticed that you 5 m and either just did an actual block string or just been like, okay, this is bad. I just want to create more space because I'm in disadvantage. Then you would have been fine. But because you overextend, you get hit, which is a very bad thing and something you should be mindful of moving forward. You actually lose a character for that too. It's also a blue combo. Make sure you hold your button. Don't trust anyone. And when it comes to this game, don't trust anyone to do combos. I don't care if it's as simple as ABC one, two, three combo. Always, always, always hold the button. You really never know. People drop dumb shit all the time. Just, uh, just always press that shit. Like, trust. I've seen people drop, like, undroppable combos. I don't know why you got hit here. You did IED back. You should have been able to block that fine. Maybe you jumped and got hit on your startup, but I, yeah, I, I don't see really why you got hit there. Mm -mm. I think you. Oh, you're 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 a moron. You're you're a moron. Uh, this is harsh language, but like this is this is very dumb. This is very dumb on your part. Why is this very dumb? Because I know exactly what happened here. What happened is you saw the assist come out, and you wanted to ex here before before the uh, the assist actually made contact. But since you didn't, you just kept pressing that shit. You're like, no, I I can still do something here, and you fucking get two L. Don't you, you can't you can't like go into games close-minded like that like creating an uh, creating a scenario in your mind and then only adhering to that one outcome because things change in this game all the time sometimes you'll you'll go for something that was good in the moment and then something changes and you have to adjust maybe back off don't do what you were trying to do there right it just depends that was uh yeah no that was that was that was quite bad I don't I don't like that at all. Okay. No assist here. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it's Popo S tier. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, sir. Oh, you missed the orb. Okay, I see. Uh, I think you missed Hellzone there? Missed the quarter circle? Something like that. Oh, 
Okay, this is good. Uh, this is good transition. Um, uh, setting up the assist for the 50-50. That's all fine and all, right? But you gotta react to you getting the hit here. You you got to, right? Don't be so don't be so focused on the mix-up that you remove the possibility of your opponent getting hit by the assist from your mind because especially like people like to wiggle on defense and so like sometimes you try to go to set up a mix-up but they just get hit by the assist and that's a free combo as long as you like are actually paying attention uh and you hit confirm because you had time here you you whiff two two l's here right you could have even stopped after the first one and probably five l'd and got a combo there What are you doing? You get to, how do you get two M'd here? Oh my god, bro! Just, just like, okay. So if you're afraid, if you're afraid of like ID resets and shit like that, because that might have been what what is going through your mind, bro. It's okay to spark the savior back character. It's fine. This is the this is like the worst case scenario for you. You get two M'd, he has an assist, and he's close to corner. It's like you're gonna lose a character no matter what. Mm-mm, surprised you got hit there, because Vegito... I mean, all he can do is double overhead you there. Okay. You got a lot of work to do, man. Okay, you don't have those. Okay, I want you to be careful about this. There's actually uh, a, quite a lot of players that have this issue, uh, including, uh, you know, I know one is in chat watching right now that has this same issue, where um, it, it's kind of an extension of what I was talking about, misses or, or you know, you don't, you don't get the hit or you don't get a combo or whatever. And so uh, your focus, yeah, you, you tunnel vision on getting that hit back after you've already lost your opportunity. Mm -mm. You have to learn to let go. Sometimes, like, shit just happens, and you don't get the combo that you wanted, or you don't get the pressure that you wanted, and that's okay. You still get to play the game. Mm -mm. If you hyper fixate on trying to get the hit back, uh, that is already lost, like, you already lost the hit, and, and now you're focused on trying to get it back, that you overextend, uh, and, and it opens up a lot of opportunities for your opponent. So, like, here, right, you drop your re jump, right, and immediately after you drop your re jump, you're super jump JLing desperately trying to get this hit back. Like just jumping and mashing as hard as you can to try to get a hit back that you lost. Don't do that. Don't do that. <clears throat> it's okay to try to anti-air your opponent if you think they're gonna come down with something, but think about the, the multitude of ways that that can go wrong, right? The most common scenario being Tech. Tag, right? What if he tags here? You just get hit. You straight up get hit here, right? You get hit for tagging. He gets out of the corner for free, doing legs here as well, because you definitely don't turn around in time and get the hit. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can give him a free hit or, or a free way out. So sometimes you just want to be careful. Just calm down. It's okay that you drop the combo. It's not the end of the world. Do not create more opportunities for your opponents by trying to overextend like this. He chose nothing, which ended up working out for you in this particular situation. But there's a shit ton of ways this can go wrong. And there's a shit ton of ways that I've seen this go wrong. And so I'm telling you that I don't want this to become a problem for you. Okay. 
Okay. This is good. Should have level three though, he was dead. I think he would have died from that combo if he didn't drop it. Scrambling right now. Drop combo. Mm -mm. Uh -um. You're playing at bag of thought speed. And you're having trouble with it, so you should slow the game down. Okay, knockdown. What we got? Nice. Caught the uptick. That's what I like to see. Consistent Oki. This is bad. You went too. You went too slow here. Mm -mm. So you went. You went to a, a from a very very good Oki sequence, the IDJL, into the hit confirm. A lot of people drop this hit confirm, even though it can be OS. Um, but you get the knockdown here, right? Now, here's where you fucked up, right? And it might not seem like a big deal, but this is actually the reason. That, that this is the reason that you fucked this up. Mm -mm, is because when you knock him down look at this gap right see this gap this is why you fuck this up is this gap right here because you're not flush on your opponent like so when you do backdash okie it needs to be a situation where you knock them down in the corner and your character is right on top of them because that that gives you the perfect spacing now because there was space between you and him uh, when you started your backdash, you're really far away after the backdash, right? Look how far away you are. And so, especially with a with a a, a JH, his JH is good, but it's not like like if I were Android 21, I wouldn't give a shit because it's a fucking giant circle. But yours is not a giant circle, and so you you do have to be mindful of these spacing. So even though it seemed like your timing was right here, right? You have to wait. You have to wait really long to get this JH to make contact, which gives him time to press a button, which is why this doesn't work, right? So be mindful of your spacing when you go for that Oki. If you want something more consistent in that situation, uh -uh. don't do don't do backdash jump if you're not like flush. Uh, you want to go for like some type of IED. If you think he's gonna uptick, then just do the same thing you did last time, where you IED'd, you did JL, and you were able to hit confirm. Just run that shit back, right? Just run that shit back if that's the case. It's still safe jumps. Um, but you want to be really careful about what Oki sequence you choose to do at what time. Okay. Oh, that was close. Nice. Oh, yeah. So, you caught on to a habit. Bag of Thought likes to, likes to mash reflect after getting 6M. Get a fat punish for that. You should definitely get Gogeta out. Thank you. What's the scramble look like? He didn't hold his vanish, so, okay. You have no assist here, though, so you want to be careful. But your double jump. Sandwich situation. Plus frames. So, this all happens. This all happens. Because you double jump egregiously, right? Right here. This double jump is real bad. It's real bad. Because you never want to be in a situation where your opponent is under you and you have spent double jump. Right? Never. You never, ever, ever want to be in this situation, especially against a sparking opponent. Because now, even if you do that YOLO double jump super dash that you see so many people do, he can literally empty vanish and still be safe. Uh, and so you don't want to be in this situation. You don't want to be in this situation. It's, it's not good. And now you get sandwiched, right? It's like, damn, you just run an offense on you now. <laughs> that all happened because you double chuck. <laughs> Do I still play this? Yeah, man. First. Oh no, you gotta hit confirm. You gotta hit confirm that. It's hard, but but you gotta do it. Cause you, you have time to realize that you're gonna hit him airborne here, right? Like you see him in the air, so you know you're gonna hit him airborne. So 
You, you have to jump cancel your 5L to get this confirmed. Can't autopilot 5LL. Only certain characters have the benefit of being able to autopilot 5LL there. You're scrambling. You're scrambling with Bag of Thought, man. Th this is not a ma like. I I know your two styles. You're not gonna you're not gonna win most scrambles with him. So if you play at his tempo, you're gonna lose. You have to slow the game down. Create more space. He he tends to struggle when people are actually willing to lame him out and make him try to force his way in over and over and over again. Okay. Yeah, doesn't. That was like, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> that definitely recovers in time. It's a bad job. Scramble. So ugly. I just didn't jail. In fact, I think this can even be 2H'd. I don't think the gap is small enough to where it can't be 2H'd. I could be wrong on that. But at the very least, you, yeah, you don't want to get hit by the Spanish, because then you just scramble again. And, and while, while, you're, while you're busy thinking about how do you how do you quell the scramble how do you make sense of what's going on you're already getting the art i uh, i think you'd live yeah The only frame one anti air he has here is uh, he would only be able to level 3 him. Because 2 1 4 S is frame 4, and uh, 2 2 S I think is too slow. So, like, if you try to DP it, I think he lands and he's able to block in time. Slow DPs have that issue. Yoink. Mm hmm Make him guess. Level three. I don't like this. I, I don't like this from you because like, if you get the hit on level three Oki, you're probably gonna get through meter penalty and kill him anyway because you're fucking Piccolo and your combos take forever. And so like, if you just level three him here, you limit all the defensive options, you get guaranteed Oki, and if he wiggles or gets hit by anything that you do, you win the game, right? You give him another chance here, you miss a midi, first of all, right? You knock him down, you don't midi him, so now you scramble again, which is what you've been losing to this entire set, is losing scrambles. So, this doesn't make sense. Just spend the three bars, bro. Don't be greedy.
Hey, Cotton Overextension. What is with you not confirming those hits, though? You're gonna guess for game here, though. You can notice most of the hits that you're getting in this hit uh, that like think of, think about I and, and, I, and I, I would tell everyone everyone that is watching right now when you play Dragon Ball Fighters really think about the way that you're getting your hits right think about it really really think about it the way that you're getting your hits to set is by locking them down into consistent mix-ups right that should be your focus not scrambling getting the hit in this crazy ass situation right your focus should be I'm gonna punish it over extension whether he blocks or gets hit, I'm going to lock him down and force him to take some shit. Because a, a player like Bagatha, and there's a lot of players like Bagatha, that are only ever going to take some shit if you force them to take some shit, right? There's no, like, there's no mind game involved where, like, oh, maybe he'll do this, maybe he'll do that, right? Most of the time, if they can choose an option that, that makes them not take some shit, they're going to do, they're going to use it, right? They're going to use it. There's a lot of players like that. And so you have to force him to take your mix. And how do you do that? Consistent knockdown Oki, consistent pressure transitions into mix-ups, right? So focus on that. I need to see more of that. He did not block your health. Like once once you actually started mixing up your hell zone mix, we talk about that too. You went low a few times in a row, right? But the moment you started going high, you got you got hit and you won that game. Imagine that. Crazy, right? Shit's it's shit's insane. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you for the follow. Cannot drop your combos like this. The levels are not worth it, man. It's not worth the levels if you're dropping the kill. The kill matters above all else. I don't give a fuck about a level seven. Kill the character first. Worry about levels later. This is unacceptable absolutely unacceptable for you to be dropping a kill on Vegito that was literally at, like in front of you you had him in the combo you went for levels instead you dropped the combo now he's alive for the rest of the game complete completely unacceptable Uh, I, th I think this might be the first time you do this set. Maybe he doesn't know that this is plus. This is plus three, right? Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, just take your plus frames, bro. Like, <laughs> plus three, plus three is like extremely good. But and the reason plus three is extremely good is because plus three is where you lock out uh, four frame reversals. So if you're plus three and he does like two, one, four H and you did, did your six frame normal, he gets counter hit and you get a full combo. Plus two, let me fact check. I heard this was plus three, but I will look. What is this? 3H. It's okay, it is plus two. Okay. I was told wrong then. Alright, well that's fine then. Your decision to not do anything is like okay then. Because maybe you were thinking about uh uh flip or something like that. Nice. Mm -hmm. He's nothing now. Okay, so almost every time that he is block stringed you with Vegito with no assist, he's done 6M. And that's really bad for Vegito because he can't he can't even clash, bro. He can't clash with you. So like, yeah.
Gotta notice shit like that. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. That, that's unfortunate. You saw him whip there, so you, like, tried to wiggle or, like, do something. Uh, and, yeah. That, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. There's not really a lot you can really do about that. Um, aside from uh, just completely disengage faster. Like, with backdash or something like that. Or tag. or That's rough. That shit happens to everyone. thought this was live you thought this was a live tournament until you press join queue <laughs> you check the queue what come on bro pull yourself together <laughs> if you want to shoot someone it has to be with bits We're we we only do the gift sub shoe thing on Talking Tuesday, or else it just gets way too out of hand. Hmm. Go back. Don't want the subs that bad. I do want the subs, but like it, it's not special if. That it would completely make a timeout with bits obsolete. Doesn't make sense. There'd be no reason that for me to have that feature on my stream if you could just give subs to do that shit anyway. Plus, I get more money from bits than I do gift subs. Oh my god. Ah, you scrambled. Go figure. Putting out orb is good. But you see how like you're you're like scrambling all over the place, you're pressing super jump jail, like just desperate to get any type of hit and that gives him the avenue that he needs to kill your character this was a triumph i'm making a note here huge success it's hard to overstate my satisfaction Science. Bro, if this happens to you one more time, I'm gonna fucking lose it, man. You've gotten backdash 5M tier, like, I think three or four times this set. And never once did you try anything else. You didn't try jumping out, you didn't try pressing Lariat. What, what's going on here, bro? Good. Go ahead and backdash. 
I'll press my fucking infinite armor move, and I'll fucking kill you for backdashing. Go ahead, that's fine. Fine by me, bro. Bad autopilot. You you always down tech. You you always down tech on Spark. You you you're like literally always down tech. Um you always down tech on Spark situations, so it's really easy to counter it. Like you literally down tech every single time. And so if someone does Spark, Key Blast, Empty Vanish, you get hit for free. If they do uh, uh, assist plus empty vanish you get hit for free like stop being a mindless idiot and actually mix up your tech options after spark because he, bro he he i don't even know if he's showing you a proper sparking staircase this set yet in the first place and if that's the case if he's not doing proper staircases then that means you just get out you just get out <laughs> you, you just get out right because he doesn't jail you to the ground so mm -mm. Oh, missed. Magathon is also a down techer, so like I said, do this. You spark here, right? Five S, empty vanish. If he does a down tech. 5L or 2H or whatever the fuck he's trying to match. Full combo. What's up, bro? Can't sparking staircase be 2H? No. If you if you air block if if someone in sparking does empty vanish and you block in the air, you get jailed to the ground for free, no matter what. There's nothing you can do about it, except spark yourself. Okay, so... This is half good. Half good because you recognize that you're actionable here. A lot of people don't recognize that they're actionable. Bad because you just- this is your turn. Like, you, you 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 hit him, and you get a full combo here. Um, you could even 2H this. Uh, maybe not Broly, because horizontal, I'm not sure about where it would reach horizontally, but it's your turn. Um, you don't, you don't have to reflect there. But at least you realize that you're actionable there, and you're trying to do something about it, so I'm not really that mad at it. getting hit on just like normal ass blockchains so much right now we're doing analysis <clears throat> sub analysis <sighs> my queue is mad populated i wonder why guys i wonder why this is the week that my my analysis queue is so populated hmm. oh wow you finally punished backdash 5m good shit I don't know why you type that again. Just why don't you message him, bro? Like, <laughs> you can't just, just message him, bro.
Uh, too low. Yeah. Uh, should live, yeah. Yeah, that Vegito sword actually doesn't even hit there. Good tag. Ah, you're getting six M's again though. Uh for what it's worth, I don't think it's possible. I don't I don't think it's possible for Vermeer to not be top two anymore, by the way. I, I appreciate it, but I don't I don't think it's possible anymore. Uh, I was doing the math the other day. <laughs> But he might play anyway. If he comes through, I'll, I'll tell him. But he hasn't been here yet today. Okay. Damn. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It uh, this is this is really funny to me because like he went for anti-air command grab a few times and it didn't work. So he decided to do air dragon rush. No, he he said he did it on purpose, so Vegito versus Piccolo is only a bad matchup if you're actually using your long range tools on Vegito, which he wasn't. So, Odatch could have literally just like cut the screen off because he's not ever pressing 2 3 success. And so you just walk him down. Just put out orb, walk him down. Like, <laughs> you don't have to think you don't have to think that hard if they're not using the uh, using the whole tools. Uh, no, that was that was pretty pretty horrible ending, um, all things considered. But this this set is a result of you. <clears throat> getting vortex into scramble situations and then losing said scramble situations um he wants you to scramble because he's better at scrambles than you are and so if you play his game then you will never win right it just doesn't work that way if you if you let him uh, impose his will upon you in dragon ball fighters it is extremely difficult for you to win from there so you should be focusing on slowing the game down creating situations where he has to take really big risks in order to get in on you uh, and punishing him for doing so. If you do that, then games will be a lot easier. Also, you know, cleaning up your Oki situation, spend the level three whenever you have it, right? Get better knocked on Oki, get better at recognizing the situations where he can choose variable tech options because very, very few times when you locked him down and actually forced him to take a block string or a mix, did he, well, did he successfully defend, right? And that's the type of thing you want to capitalize on. If someone, if I'm playing against someone and I notice that every single time I get a block string, I get a hit, then how do I ever lose, right? It's very difficult for me to lose. I don't have to worry about my offense at that point. All I have to worry about is, can I beat this guy in neutral? And yes, no, you absolutely can beat him in neutral because he's not even using all of his tools. He's not 236 S'ing you with Vegito. He's not doing any of his strong long range tools. So long range, you're gonna smoke him. You're gonna absolutely destroy him. And so you should focus on that instead of these like mid-range scrambles where you're trying to like hurry up and do super ja super jump JL and like try to get people to pick a load, right? Because those are all commitments at the end of the day and, and like it's a scramble and that's what he wants. He wants you both to scramble and not know what's going on because he is used to playing that way. And so you should worry about things like that. You should also be more mindful of what is he choosing to do in common scenarios, right? <clears throat> Such as him 6 ming you is a common situation, right? A common scenario in this deck. Every single time he 6 m you, he did backdash 5M. Every single time. And it wasn't until the literal very last situation, the, the, the very last time did you do anything about it. It took like three or four times of him 6 ming you, which by the way, were almost all in situations where he had Vegito with no assist. Like pretty much if he had Vegito and didn't have an assist, he would do a block string into 6M, then backdash 5M. He did that like sequence pretty much every time and it took you way too long to realize it 
way 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 too long to realize it you gotta you gotta recognize that type of stuff earlier because then you get free hits and more important than getting the free hit you force your opponent to actually change something about what they're doing right you force them out of their comfort zone and people crumble people crumble when they're out of their comfort zone you will see it if you show them that you have the answers to their their game plan then they, some people are really bad at, at adjusting and adapting and, and coming up with new ideas to deal with with the person that that has the answer so yeah you gotta you gotta think harder you gotta you gotta think harder it's just the way it is um keep keep things consistent focus on consistency as the number one key the the difference the main difference between a mid-level player and a high level player is the high level player is just more consistent the more consistent uh, in game plan wise, they're more consistent execution, more consistent pretty much everything across the board. And so that should be your focus uh, for until further notice. So. Probably did like Dante 2H, that's why this uh, empty vanish JS works. Can't press there. No, 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 no. Yes, there's no need to do this. This is this is nonsense. Just jail him to the ground into a 50-50, bro. Don't do that. I was good on his part. Yep. Anti reflect with the assist. Yep. Mixed. He drops his combo because he doesn't know what he's doing. What's up? Yeah. Drops. Pretty ugly start to the set. One frame gap. Died for it too. It feels bad. I see, I see. Quite a lot. Okay, this situation, you kind of want to delay tech. Uh, you definitely don't want to uptech because uptech the problem with uptech is that uptech is the only thing that guarantees that you get jailed into mix right if you down tech um if you down tech or back tech you um you let you're on the ground so you get to reflect right but if you don't if you if you uptech here uh or or choose if you don't here is you air block meaning that you can no longer reflect because you're jailed and then you are forced to take a mix up from there so you got to recognize when he's knocking you down, like when he's actually doing an SKD on you and when he's doing just a regular soft knockdown, because you have a ton of options when he does soft knockdown, but you got to be aware. It happens quickly, so can't can't afford to, to let him get free mixes on you like that.
Scrambles. So this situation, uh, you didn't keep track of your your knockdown resource, or you did the you did the wrong kick, I think. Yeah, you gotta do the S K D one guy. <laughs> hmm, got the whack dash, drop combo. Mixed again. Still super super committal. Mm -mm. I already see. I already see what the problems are. I'm just uh, watching another game or two just to confirm a few things. You seem to really favor uptech air dash back as well. I mean, okay, fine. Sometimes, uh, man. You, you just really don't get much from it though. Uh, <laughs> I actually go over this in the sparking video, but... Why? Why'd you go for this again? You're not, you're not getting anything off of this. Like, he's okay taking this hit. And betting on reflect because even, even though you got the command grab there, you get nothing from it, so... It doesn't matter, essentially. The only time it would matter is if it was going to kill him. Tremble? Yep. Mash on his level 3, okay? Okay. Dash. Okay, if you ever get in a situation this goes for any of you where you combo them into DR by accident, you can super dash right here and you will hit confirm and you could have killed him off of it. It will confirm. Uh, as long as they're, you know, close enough to the corner, but definitely would work then. We have two mic mix. He should just keep 21 in a level 3 but he's a he's a scaredy cat. 
He's a scaredy cat. Special attack. All right. He air blocked. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna be doing this a lot, which hits hits do this a lot in general, you do want to be mindful of when they air block because you're plus here. You're you're plus one. So like, you're you're an advantage. <clears throat> yeah, you don't have to back off. What your Oki looks like. All right, empty jump grab. So like, you hit him, but does it matter? No, it doesn't. And it, like, so so like this choice on Oki is not super great, just because like you hit him, but you don't kill him. You have no you have no way to kill him because your meter penalty. So it's not like you're gonna gain the meter off of the grab. And so now. You're back in the same situation, right? You're back in the same situation, except now your knockdown is worse, right? So before it was a hard knockdown, you could do a lot of things on a hard knockdown, right? And you're like plus 40-ish. Now it's just an SKD, which means that now you have to deal with delay tech. You have to deal with you have to deal with up tech. You have to deal with all the tech options now because it's no longer a hard knockdown. So this command grab, while it was successful, actually just does nothing but put you in a worse situation than you were originally if the goal is to kill the character. And so you should go for something else on Oki in that situation. Yep, you lose everything. See that? Yes, they are. And this kid Boo is still alive. down for that. Kill him. Actually, I, I actually know exactly what the problem is. So I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down into a few parts for you. Uh, and this also shouldn't take that long. So first of all, first off, uh, you are losing neutral probably like 70 to 80 percent of the time, and it's not because. Um, so a lot of people, whenever they lose neutral a lot, they just attribute it to, uh, oh well, the the guy the guy I'm playing against is just better than me. And while that can be the case, um. Uh, it's not addressing the problem, and your problem is that you're not abusing your character's strong long-range options in neutral. So when you're in this situation, when there's actually space between you and your opponent, mm -mm, Candy is choosing options that are, are most likely to get him to hit in long-range situations, and you are not. You are trying to do things like run forward uh, and, and relying on system mechanics when, you know, you have rapid key blasts, you have an EX tackle if you want to get through key blast game, right? You have all that stuff at your disposal. You have the UI assist to help cover some space. You have hit, which is a, a, actually another neutral assist that's invulnerable, right? So you want to make sure you rely on these tools to get your hits instead of just like trying to, trying to bulldog him down. Like you're just trying to force your way in without using these resources. And so against someone that is actually using their resources effectively, it's very difficult for you to win neutral. Uh -uh. And so, like, you're, like, this opening is good, right? So you dash forward, call hit, uh, and you key blast. And you see that he's boo-balling. 
And you actually could answer this, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, <laughs> but then, so, so, <laughs> this is actually a habit. I have it that Candy and Fred, I don't know if Fred does it anymore because he's been running different teams, but, um, that's usually how they, that's usually like the pretty standard opener for them. They call their neutral assist, and then if their neutral assist doesn't work, they super dash assist, uh, with, with Team Gohan. That's usually, that's usually like their opening game. It's pretty standard. It'll work against a lot of people because even on block, like it puts them in a very valuable situation. Mm -mm. However, oh, you actually whack dashed here, which is unfortunate. So, okay. <laughs> You, you probably actually would have been fine here. Uh, you, you probably would have been fine here if you didn't backdash. But that's, that's, that's hard. It's hard to know, right? Sometimes, sometimes though, <clears throat> uh, on, a super dash on a super dash assist situation, like, uh, you're, like, generally, like, all right blocking there. Um, just because, like, the angles of super dash, once you make contact with them, are usually not going to be super great to the point where they can, like, actually get a straight up 50 50. Kid Boo is, uh, really good at, like, transitioning, uh, and stuff like that, but mm -mm. it's still, it's still not too bad. Also, like, jumping there is fine as well, because while you might get jailed to the ground, he has no assist afterwards, right? And so you'd be okay with getting jailed to the ground. You know, all you have to worry about at that point is cross up JS. Uh, and you know, you can play some RPS with that. Some people like to try super dashing him. Some people, you know, like look for grabs and they up back. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that, that, that could potentially happen. But what I want you to focus on is you, you need to be abusing the strong pools and the ranges that they're strong in. <clears throat> so if you're, if you're one of your advantages in this matchup, right? If we look at your team versus his team is that, you know, Kid Buu doesn't have rapid key blast. Now Kid Buu has, Kid Buu has great neutral but he does not have rapid key blast. So you have an advantage when you're both far away from each other and grounded, right? You just straight up have an advantage. The only thing at that point you have to worry about is 21 assist, which can be counter called. You could counter call UI. You could preemptively counter call UI if you think he's gonna call 21 to like, you know, try to force his way in. Or you can just stop, right? Because the thing, the thing about calling 21 from full screen is that if you block it, <clears throat> If he decides to then try to take advantage with like super dash assist, right? That doesn't jail. That does, he's not gonna jail you into super dash from full screen, meaning that you can react and reflect and alleviate all that pressure that you were worried about before. Because once you reflect the super dash, even if you end up blocking the assist or getting hit by the assist, there's no confirm. He can't confirm it into a block string. He can't confirm it into a hit. So a lot of that pressure just kind of goes away uh, outright. And so. I really want you to keep keep these types of things in mind. You want to put yourself in situations where the percentages are highest for you. <clears throat> you want to put yourself into situations that you are most likely to get the hit as, as opposed to your opponent. <clears throat> Some other things, right? Your tech options, like when you get knocked down, you all, uh, you <clears throat> you wiggle quite a lot, right? Very rarely are you choosing block. Uh, are are you choosing block on like your knockdown situations? Now this walkout is fine, and, and, and I'm totally okay with that. But there are a few other scenarios in this set where you up tech, uh, where you up tech and got jailed into a mix up as a result. So your tech option should be governed by your opponent's resources, right? Because Dragon Ball Fighters, as I always say, is a game of resource management. And so depending on what resources are available for you and your opponent, that, that should drive what decisions you make, including your tech option. If your opponent has an assist available, up teching is not nearly as good because if they do lock you down, right? If they do manage to force you to block, then now you're in a 50-50 that you cannot get out of because you get jailed to the ground. You had no opportunity to reflect. You can't delay wake up once you up tech, right? You can't do any of that. All you can pretty do, all you can do at that point is bet it on a guard cancel, which is very dangerous as you learn against Kid Buu. It's hard to guard cancel this character or spark, right? Which is a resource that generally you want to save for whenever you really, really need it. Like when you actually, actually really need it. And so these types of things can be avoided. Uh, don't forget that your, your subset of defensive options change depending on what tech option you choose. <clears throat> Uh, and and so I think you're you're biasing a little bit too much towards up tech, whether that's up tech and block, which you got jailed for a few times, or up tech backdash, uh, press a button, which you did quite a lot. <clears throat> it's really dangerous to get into. The tech options are strong because of the mix up, right? The most annoying thing about running offense in this game is that there is so many different tech options that my opponent can choose and i have no idea of knowing which one that they're gonna do and so they choose it i can call an assist to try to like cover some things for me and stuff like that but essentially i don't know what you're gonna choose until it happens and that makes it very hard to run consistent offense 
uh, against a lot of characters, especially because you got to worry about specific options as well, right? You're playing UI. That means he also has to worry about special tech whenever he's in knockdown situation. You also have to worry about characters that have VPs or reverses, right? There's just a lot. There's a lot of different things on top of the system mechanics that make it different. So make sure you're, you're implementing all of those things into your defensive repertoire or else you're just going to get run over a lot in matches, right? The, your opponent's going to snowball out of control because you're not offering any good resistance on defense by mixing up your options and making it more difficult for them. And so they just run their offense and they get the hit and they run their offense and they get the hit and they run their offense and they get the hit, right? So that that's really important. On offense, your transitions need to be better. If you find a situation where you're able to lock him down, you're, you need to you need to transition into a mix-up quickly, rather than lately. Or rather rather than late. I don't know why I said lately, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so like if you if you lock him down, you don't have to do a full long ass block string to set up your your ex kick into uh, you know your ex kick into to float mix, right? Uh, that's like your 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 standard conventional mix-up with Blue Goku that you're gonna have available to you but don't tunnel vision on that right just because you can't like maybe there's a situation where you can't do the ex kick mix up and all that right there's more than one ways to mix your opponent right there's more than one way you people people are like why are people super dash assisting mid screen well it turns out you could still mix off a super dash assist mid screen it might not be a 50 50 but it's still mixed right and 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 people people get hit by things that are not 50 50s all the time so don't don't tunnel vision on, okay, I have this mix up and this is the only mix up I can run. A lot of the a lot of the hits that people get in this game are because they think on the fly uh, and they're able to turn situations that weren't mix ups previously into ones that are favorable for them uh, on the mix up end. So don't don't tunnel vision on just doing that. There's way more ways, way, way, way more ways to mix people. There's fake assist dragon rush, there's super dash assist and then fake lows. There's, you know, fake, fake cross up super dash, there's regular cross up. You have command grabs, right? There's so many ways. So don't don't feel like the only time that you're going to be mixing him is whenever uh, whenever you do those things. Uh, and neutral, uh, also like play a little bit more reactive, right? I'd like you to I'd like you to stay a little bit more grounded than you have been uh, in this set. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is like you're taking to the air a lot. Uh, and the problem with going into the air is that you limit your defensive options, like I talked about before. And so like now your opponent's assists are much harder to deal with because you're in the air like you can avoid 21 assists by going into the air right but if you interact with the assist like say it clips your legs or something well now you're jailed to the ground and you have like pretty much no options right so if you stay on the ground and you react to your opponent's assist call especially because he only has one assist that goes full screen uh right he only has 21 he only has 21 that goes full screen and so like when you're in those situations where you're playing long range neutral against them you should be looking for that assist call, right? And you can reflect it, avoid it. Like there's a lot of things that you can do. You want to answer that first. And then since there's nothing to, to like kind of help him cheat his way through neutral from the from the full screen, he's going to have to bet on, on much more committal things. He might choose to do like 3M. He might choose the super dash. Uh, he might choose to play key blast game. But like I said, your, your character kind of beats his in the point matchup in terms of if you both are just trying to key blast each other uh, to death. So... That's what I mean. Like you wanna, you wanna kind of play. <clears throat> you you kind of wanna play off of the resources of your opponent, and that's what I mean by resource management. Yeah, you're. It's not as simple as just looking at your own assist. It's also looking at your opponent's assist. How much meter do they have? Do they have sparking? Are they gonna use it here? Right. All of these things matter. And so, um, that that's really really important in the set that I think you you had trouble with. Um. Uh, his his. So Candy's team is also one that is very important to know how to guard cancel against. Um, uh, it, it, it's really hard to it, it's 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 hard to guard cancel sometimes, but it's really important to know how to guard cancel, right? It's really important to know how to guard cancel Kid Buu. It's really important to know how to guard cancel Team Gohan. Of course, Team Gohan is much more straightforward. Obviously, if he presses EX legs on your block, most of the time you're gonna want to guard cancel, right? That's very simple. Kid Buu is different, right? Because his transitions are faster, so he can go into into uh into Boo Ball into 50/50 way faster, so you have less time. You have less time to think about it. Uh, a lot of the time. That being said, like almost probably 90% of the block strings he puts you in involve like going quickly into ball. So if you if you're able to look for the ball, then you will get much more successful, uh, much more successful guard cancels. Also, like there are gaps as well. Like it's okay to to like late reflect because you're expecting him to do. Uh, you're expecting to do blue ball plus a fifth and, and 50 50 you like that that type of stuff is on the table as well Don't don't rule those out. Don't don't give him too much respect 
uh, because you re like you can respect him as a player. Like you might think like, yeah, you know, Candy's strong uh, and you know, he knows how to play the game. But at the end of the day, his the, the characters that he's playing are the same exact as everyone else's. So there's things that they can and cannot do, right? Mm -mm. Candy's Kid Boo does not get extra frame advantage on his buttons because he's Candy. That doesn't work that way. If there's a gap for him, there's a, there, there's a gap for anyone else, there's a gap for him. And so you want to treat that as such, right? You, you still have the same options against him than you would anyone else. It's just a matter of he might challenge you a bit more on, you know, what to use when. And, and, and you want to constantly be th thinking and making adjustments uh, in the neutral and on defense, I think, are where, where you should... Um, where you should focus on for now because offense wise like your your team's offense is pretty straightforward and so i don't want you to think about that too too much it is important that we're making the most out of our advantage when we get it but i think where you're struggling right now is in neutral and defense and so just really think really hard what is my opponent doing in neutral what do where do i need to be on the screen against them if he's playing 21 that goes here right then up here's a dead zone the only way he can get up to you only only things that he can do with kid boo to make contact with you up here is 2s which is key blast property and won't lock you down or super dash right those are the only things he can really do and he is choosing those options whenever you do avoid those assists as well so it's not like he's not betting it on it he is but you have to be ready like when you limit your opponent's options you need to be ready for the few options that they have right it's not as simple as you know i i remove a few options off the table and now i just get to ignore everything right if i limit my opponent's actions down to two possibilities you better you better be fucking sure that you're ready for those two options or else you just kind of look foolish you know like it just it is pretty silly if i if i put my opponent into a situation where i know they can only super dash and then they super dash and i get hit what the fuck do i look like foolish i just look foolish because i did the hard part but i didn't do the easy part right so i would keep that in mind moving forward Anders. just keep practicing keep playing more uh keep keep playing more games uh and and you'll get there man i think you will you just need to work on a few things your macro game is where you're having trouble right now it's thinking about the overall like the big picture of dragon ball fighters and transitioning that into the you know the, the micro situation but first we have to attack the overall game plan and then we're able to focus on specific things like um you know what do i need to do with my character at this particular moment at this particular time what options do i have to defend each ect but until you focus on the overall okay i need to deal with assists assists are like bro people get people get a ton people get a ton better in this game by just looking at assists right if you're out there and you're a dragon ball fighters player and you don't know how to improve and you don't actively pay attention to your opponent's assist and and like reflect them in neutral and like really play your game based on your assist i promise you that will make you better in a extremely short amount of time because assists govern a ton in this game characters are not complete there are a ton of characters that cannot do shit without assists and so the moment you start paying more attention to that as a resource it'll go a lot better for you Okay, last one for today. Wow. Park? Yep. Why'd you backdash? What are you afraid of? This was this was pre-sparking video, but this is not a situation where you need to fear him. Because he can't turn around. I, I actually, listen, if you out there play this game and you did not watch my sparking video that I just put on YouTube, go watch that shit. I promise you, you'll learn. You'll learn quite a lot. Because in this situation, you still checkmate him. Mm-mm. <clears throat> You might think like, okay, I don't, I, I want to back off because I'm afraid of EX grab, but he can't EX grab you here because the character does not turn around. <clears throat> and so if you do air dash forward button and try to start your staircase, if he actually tries to go for EX grab, he'll involve through your JL, but you won't get grabbed. So there's no reason to not go for it there. Just staircase him. Like, trust me. No reason to back off there. Mm hmm Mixed. Yep. Two assists, you're gonna die. Oh, 
probably start booting this cloud while I'm doing this too. Well, I was cursed. I don't know what this 2S was. I don't like that. Yeah, that's... That's just a pretty silly decision. Close enough to the corner. Use stage landmarks. When you get the hit, right? When you get the hit, look at where you are on the screen, right? And you can use the, this is where backgrounds come into play. And this is the reason that a lot of people like cell games because the edge of the corner on both sides of cell games is where the, the pillars are, right? And so it's much easier to know where you are on the screen. But uh, Galactic Arena is pretty good for that too, because like you know that you're starting to the left of the center, right? Obviously, you're on the or the or to the right rather. Uh, you're on the right side of of the center, right? Mm -mm, the screen, because you're closer to this screen over here on the right, and so you know that you're not, you know that you're not gonna make it to the corner on on legs here. Five H Oki. Or transition there. Lose a character for that too. Not meaty. Please just meaty people. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, you're just fucked. You're fucked. You're, yeah. <laughs> this situation's so funny because you're you're actually fucked. So, like, there's not there's not a lot you can do here. Sorry, I had to click the boot button on that. Also, later, scumrat. So, like, yeah. Uh, um. So, let me tell you why you got hit here. You might think this uh, this 2H is good, right? Because it keeps you in the air for longer. But air 2Hs have landing recovery, generally, in this game. And so, like, you 2H, right? And you still have landing recovery still have landing recovery because you haven't done anything to cancel out your landing recovery so like when you land you see how vegeto like does this little like stump animation like see how he like puts his hand on the ground that's that's your legs recovery yeah that's your landing recovery <laughs> More quarter, quarter circle issues, huh? Mm -mm. You know me, the fighting freak knuckles, and we're at 
all happened because you overextended. Hey, you're, you're one of those people I was talking about earlier where you guys can't accept the fact that you fucked up and are never willing to give up your turn. So you tried to mash 2H there to try to get a turn back after you drop, and it forces this scramble, which you cannot respond to because, like, there's just a lot of shit going on. And then you double jump and land and he fucking jails you. That combo fucking sucked! No, I don't think you thought there at all. I think you that is one of your autopilots and you weren't thinking at all actually. Oh nice. You've messed a few times on this stagger seriously. Oh. Well, that was weird. Man, your sparking transition fucking sucks. You gotta work on that. Later, bro. I don't know if you had to spend the X there. Because now you don't have you don't have the meter for You have to. Couldn't you just DR here? I don't see why you couldn't just DR there. He's running you down. Mostly because, like, you don't you don't really know how to play defense. So, like, most of the time, if he if he puts you in pressure, he's gonna get the hit. Oh, Vermeer fucking sucks. Trash can. What should you do on defense against this team? Use your actual, uh, use your actual offense. Yeah, your, your actual options. Is your your defense against every team is only mash or reflect. You don't do anything else.
Oof. Death. Yeah, there's a lot of shit you can do. It's tags, guard cancels, vanishes. They give you options. But it's on you to know what to use when, but that would help having those available to you, trust. Definitely. Mm -mm. Also like also as part of defense, like checking air dashes with 2H and, and vulnerability, like there's there a lot of things, honestly. The defense is more complicated than, than people make it, but... Uh, your tech options, like, need help too, like, right? Mixing up your tech options, your delay wake-ups, stuff like that. Stuff like that matters a lot. Yeah, you're, you're playing Gotenk, so it's not worth it for you to play that. If you both 5M, you lose, because... Uh, Gotenks just doesn't get there in time. Counter hit. If you're that scared, just spark. Like, why are we not sparking Vegito here? Why are we, why are we dying to 6M when we have spark? This, is, this might be like the one good decision you made here, is using Empty Vanish. Your, your opponent is actually not able to spam special moves at all when you're in Empty Vanish, because a lot of time you just get a straight up punish. Because you can't whiff cancel Vanish special moves. A lot of the time I'll just sit there and spark and I'll wait for my opponent to do something like beam and like, wow, free punish, thanks. Appreciate that. I'm gonna live. <laughs> That's a funny press. needy <laughs> how do you know it, it doesn't even matter it doesn't matter how he knows and sometimes Sometimes those moments where you ask, how did, he, how did he know? They don't know. Sometimes they just do it. And it works out. I mean, that shit has a hitbox at his legs, too, so, like... He can afford to just do stuff, though, when he's this far ahead. And you can't block 6Ms anyway, so it's like, what the fuck matters, right? Okay. Um, Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you need to learn how to defend, like, like actually defend. <clears throat> Your defense sucks, shit up, and it's it, like I can. People, people are gonna win games against you just exploiting your defensive tendencies. This is not good enough. So you need to practice that uh, quite a lot. In neutral, more assist attention, more assist attention. The most amount of attention that you pay to 
uh, your opponent's assist is the only time you ever actually pay attention to your opponent's assist is when it's key blast property because then you're like oh shit i can super dash so then you press it but other than that you're not paying attention to like oh i can actually reflect this assist and mitigate all the pressure that he has or <clears throat> Oh, if I put myself here on the screen, then I just don't have to interact with the assist at all. That's the type of uh, that's the type of thought that you need to be having in the neutral game, it, 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 because that type of stuff is like uh, much less prone to being programmed. Like if my if my if I know my opponent, <clears throat> if I know my opponent wants to super dash through my key blast assist, then I will literally just meet you with two H and kill you every time, right? But it's much harder to deal with an opponent who actually mitigates the assist advantage by either reflecting and getting rid of the advantage or or just not interacting with my assist they look at my assist they see it's off cooldown so they put themselves somewhere on the screen where it's really hard for me to get to or i have to make a hard commitment to get there infinitely harder to deal with someone like that than someone who the the base extent of what they're going to do in neutral whenever i call a key blast assist is just press super dash right so <clears throat> The key blast assists in this game are like good, but the problem the the problem is that um they are uh, often the key blast assists will put you in a situation where your opponent is still advantaged uh even if you try to even if you try to answer uh there are exceptions to this rule and it's actually not true every single time, but more important than that, right? The key the the assists that are not key blasts <clears throat> You really have to deal with those because that is what's going to lead to you getting pressured for free, right? A full screen assist call that you end up blocking instead of reflecting or avoiding leads to a block string for your opponent, which leads to you getting hit because your, your defense isn't holding up as much. And so you really need to pay attention to those resources uh, in particular. And and like I said, those just like I told Anders, the, the resources of your opponent drive the decisions that you have. If you look at like that, that situation where you and him both 5 m and you clashed on round start, is it in your benefit to take a, a, a committal round start like that? Absolutely not. Why? Because you can't even call an assist as a contingency plan because Gotenks does not get there quick enough, whereas he has 16 behind him. And so, like, do you see the disparity between between you know the the risk reward of him going for something like that as opposed to you? Right? You need to think about that stuff, type of stuff. <clears throat> it means it means a lot like it, it means a lot you need to work on your timer right we talked about your defensive timer where x amount of time if i put Hemar in a block string he will mash right still there and that's because you probably just don't recognize how to use all your defensive options like cohesively right so as you work on that the timer will go away <clears throat> but you need to actively be like making making choices and, and practicing uh, doing so and you're gonna lose sometimes because of it but losing a few times in a casual is nothing to compared to losing in a tournament that you wanted to do well in because you couldn't block 6m right um so that that just doesn't doesn't mean a, a ton in the grand scheme of things uh in comparison <clears throat> another thing is uh feels like your pressure is a little underwhelming i'm not gonna lie it feels like it, it feels like this set like the few times that you're actually able to to get in and and force uh force vermeer to defend the pressure was not all that great um so you need to be making uh, you need to be like when you get a hit or you get pressure in neutral right you should be thinking about those resources that i was talking about like you missed out on level three oki right you missed out on level three oki because you did ex grab instead of dring that stuff matters a lot because now now because i don't have to guess on your level three oki right it's much easier for me to win the game because I can look for opportunities to get out because I don't have to guess on the mix-up. And so you as the offender need to be make sure you're taking your hits uh, as efficiently as possible and making the best decisions to position yourself for the rest of the game. <clears throat> because uh, if you leave opportunities on the table, these games th that it feel already feels like it's hard, like I'm sure it feels like any time you play against him, uh, you have a hard time. You have a bit of a hard time, right? That gets even more difficult if you're giving up level three opportunities. You're giving up mix-up opportunities. You're giving up pressure opportunities, right? And so we need to make the most of those things. And you can you can get inspiration from other people as well. It's not something that you just have to figure out for yourself. Now there are team-specific things, right? Because like obviously your team will have a specific set of things that they can do because it's that particular team. But for general game sense and running pressure, right? You can look at other people, right? You can look at other people run their offense and, and see like different styles right there are a lot of us that that play in this community we run offense in completely different ways uh like completely different ways some of you don't run good offense at all 
Some of you run really good offense <clears throat> in terms of mix-ups, but your pressure is lacking. Some are vice versa, right? Sometimes their, their pressure is good, but their mix is lacking. Right? And you need to have all the parts to run good offense in a game that is defense favored. If you don't have all the pieces, then it's going to be hard for you to get the hits where they, where you get the opportunity. Right? It matters a lot. Knockdowns, Oki, pressure, mix, all that stuff matters. All of that's offense, and you have to have all of them. If one part is missing, it becomes infinitely harder to win the game. Right? Think about someone who's really good at mix and pressure, but their knockdown Oki sucks. Right? What happens? They knock someone down and they never get to lock them down to run their pressure or their mix in the first place. So how do they win, right? It just doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and so you need to have all the pieces. It, it, it is not, it's not as simple as, you know, my characters have good pressure. So I just have to turn, I just turn off my brain and it does it for itself. You are a human being and your opponent's a human being. And so you need to constantly be making adjustments so that you can actually hit your opponent whenever you get the chance. You didn't get many this this set. You didn't get many opportunities to hit your opponent. And the few times that you did get the opportunity to hit your opponent, most of the time you didn't because your offense is just kind of lackluster. Your transition game needs some work. And that's fine. This is this is not, I'm not telling you this to make you feel bad. I'm telling you this because you need to work on it. You just you just need to like actively actively make an effort, right? And and you know, submitting for analysis is the first step, but there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. You feel like you crumble when people figure out your offensive patterns? Yeah, but like that only happens because your offense is lacking, right? If if your if your offense is good enough, right? So for example, when I go into games, right? When I play against people, it doesn't matter to me how good your offense or how good your defense is. I I actually don't give a shit. Like I I like when I am running pressure against someone, you're all the same to me. You're all the exact same. Why? Because I know my offense is good enough. I know eventually, if I'm able to lock you down and mix you, you're gonna get hit. You're just gonna. You're you're gonna guess. You're gonna guess wrong. You're gonna have to spend a resource to try to escape the mix. And that's the goal. That's the goal is to make your offense good enough to where it doesn't matter who you're playing against. If I if I go up against someone that blocks a ton, I have something for them. Someone that reflects a lot, got something for them. Guard cancel, they like to spark early. Cool, I got something for all of that. And so I don't have to worry about these things when I go into games, because my transition game is good. I, I don't give my opponents a lot of time between I've won neutral to you're getting mixed. That time is very short. And so often they don't even have time. They don't even have time to think about what the fuck do I do here? You're already guessing on a 50-50, so you don't get that chance. And so that should be your goal. That should be your goal to make it to that point, to where, uh, at least on the offensive end, it's good enough to where you can run it against everyone, right? Your offense is consistent enough. Consistency is the key, right? Consistency. <clears throat> it's consistent enough to where no matter who you're playing against, right? They have to hold it, right? I would run the same, the same mix-ups that I run on you guys in the cloud. I would run on Goichi if I played him. The same exact shit. And why wouldn't I? Exactly, right? It just doesn't make sense. It's that good. <clears throat> so you're sh you should strive to make yours that good. That's that's the goal. That's the goal. And that takes work. And that takes lab work. It's not going to get better on its own. It just won't. And so, yeah, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. There's 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 aspect. There's three major aspects of the game, right? I usually break it down for people in three major aspects: offense, defense, neutral. Easy to understand. All three of those aspects of the game from you need work, right? And that's not even a bad thing because we all actually need work on all three aspects of the game. But I'm saying uh, for the for your peers, like for the 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 people that you're going to be playing against most often, what you're doing right now is not cutting it. And so we need to make an active effort to improve these uh, these aspects to where we can actually feel like we're playing the game, right? Right now, it doesn't feel like you're playing the game against your opponent. You're not playing the full game, right? And that's because certain certain parts of those major aspects that I'm talking about are missing. And so there's just a big, there's big gaps in your gameplay. So you can't even play the player to player, right? You can't even play like the, you know, the mind game of, you know, we're answering each other's answers because you're never forcing your opponent to answer in the first place. That shit's so easy that there's no mind game, right? So a lot of work to do. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks for watching, YouTube people.